hand controls. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, the handbrake, which is sometimes called the parking brake. Yeah. Yeah. You've already tugged it when you did your cockpit drill to make sure we weren't going to move off anywhere. Okay. So we know at the moment it's on the on position. The handbrake parking brake is on. Okay. Yeah. With the handbrake on the off position, that is all the way down. Okay. Now this one is a cable system, okay? A bit like your push bike. Mm -hmm. When you pull the lever, it pulls the cable, pulls the, the brake onto the wheel, yeah. okay? And this operates the rear wheels only. Yeah. Can you remember how many wheels the foot brake operated? All, all four. All four, exactly. Um, so it's much more efficient to use your foot brake to stop yeah. and your hand brake once you have stopped. Yeah. In addition, there's no braking lights attached to this parking brake. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to help anyone out behind you if you pull your handbrake. Okay, so this works on a down. ratchet system. I can't just push this down. No. The way of releasing this is to push this button in. You see the silver button on this yeah. car? Okay. Um, and what we need to do, we need to release the ratchet slightly by pulling it up with our left hand. With your thumb, push the button in and then release the parking brake all the way down. And release the button. We can't do that yet because we're not safe and secure. So what I want you to do is push your foot brake down with your right foot. Push your foot brake down, the one in the middle. That's it. Push it down so we know that the brakes are on and if we release the handbrake we're not going to roll anywhere. Yeah? Push it nice and firmly down. Yeah. Okay? So it doesn't go anymore. Yeah? Okay. And then with our left hand you can hold that uh, parking brake, pull it up slightly just to release the ratchet Push the button in with your thumb. If it doesn't go, you need to pull it up a little bit higher. Okay? Push the button in with your thumb. Hold the button in. It's not quite on yet, so pull it up a bit more. It's quite stiff because I've put it on. This is the first time that you've released it. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Push the button in. Now release the pedal, the, the handbrake all the way down. Do not release your foot brake. Okay? Now the handbrake is in the off position. You can release your thumb and re relax on the... on. Okay? Don't release your foot pedal. I'm the not. handbrake is, is now off. Okay. Now, we don't just grab that handbrake to put it on and go... Because no. we don't like that noise. It wears all the bits of metal down inside of it. Mm -hmm. So we're still going to use that button to put yeah. the parking brake on. So with your left hand again, hold that. Push the button in. Hold the button in. Pull the handbrake up. It won't come as much as when I did it, okay? Because no. I'm a bit stronger than you. That's not a problem. Release mm. your thumb and then release the pressure off. Okay. So the parking brake is now on, okay? Yeah? It'll is, that, be... is that not the right height? Well, I think you could probably pull that up one more, okay? So put button in for me, pull it up, and now release the button. Good, yeah. okay? Now, if you wanted to, you can release the foot brake, but we're not going to. I want you to release that parking brake for me again. So up she comes, push the button in, down it goes. That was a lot easier this time because you had put it on, yeah? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to put it back on. So button in, pull it up as much as you can. Good, release. Uh, now it went oh. down before you released the button. So up she comes, button off, and then release the pressure. Good. Yeah. Now you can release your foot brake. Sure? Yeah. Okay. okay? Yeah. Right, so we know about the handbrake. It's quite fun. Yeah, it was harder when I had put it on. Yeah, and you had to really tug it. But the yeah. second time it was a lot easier because it was at your level. And it was still it still secured the car. It's yeah. just that I'm just that little bit stronger than you. Okay? Okay, so we're gonna go with the gears then. Okay, here's the gear stick. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've got numbers on the gear stick. One, two, three, four, five, and R. R stands for Um I don't know. Reverse. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um Okay, so we've got numbers here, and as you can see, if I move this left and right, it's going along this line here. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah? And it always springs back in between three and four. Okay? If I let go, it's sprung back to the middle. If I push yeah. it to the right, let go, it's sprung back to the middle. Okay? Now, this position here is called neutral. Yeah. You've heard of neutral before? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you take your mind back to your push bike, yeah, has your chain ever come off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you pedal, but yeah. nothing happens. Yeah. That's very similar to neutral. Okay? The engine's running, but nothing happens. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, as soon as you put that chain on, it was in a gear. Yeah? Yeah. And probably it was easier for you to pull away in gear one. Yeah. Yeah? 
Okay, so gear one, as you can see, is across to the left and up. So what I'm gonna do is, it looks a bit strange for me to do it because it's on the other side, but I'm gonna use my left hand and I'm gonna put my hand with my thumb facing down the gear stick. Yeah. Because naturally then I want to come across and my thumb can pressurize it to go up. Do you see yeah. that? Yeah? If I was just to grab it and throw it up, it might go anywhere. Yeah. But if I put my thumb down, it's definitely gonna come across and up. Yeah. yeah. Now it's going to look a lot comfier for you to do that. So do that for me. Thumb down. Good. Across towards my leg. Good. And up. That's in gear one. Okay. So you can release off of the gear stick now. If the engine was on now, it would be moaning about this because we haven't used the clutch. Okay. Yeah. But the engine's not on. Okay. I'm just going through the gears first of all. Yeah. Now, when you picked up speed on your bike, you started pedaling really fast in gear one. Yeah. 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 Okay. But you weren't really going very far. So you had to change to gear two. Yeah. Yeah, exactly the same with the car, okay? You build up the engine speed and you need to, before it starts going too fast, change to a different gear so the, and so the road speed can pick up but the engine speed stays down. Think about your pedaling, your road speed goes up but your pedaling stays down, yeah. yeah? So we're gonna keep our thumb down because it's across to the left. With our thumb down, we're gonna bring it down towards gear two. Good, keeping the pressure across to me, gear two. Really easy, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Now, again, you can release it off the gear stick. Gear three is even easier. We know that if we knock it to neutral, it goes smack bang in between three and four. Yeah? So we're not going to do any left or right at all. All we're going to do is cup our hand this way. Okay? That's it. With, okay? And you can use that part of your hand just to knock it up. It will spring. And then up again. Yeah? yeah? There's no left or right. If you had pulled it right, you might have selected fifth by mistake. Yeah, but you can use that spring. And surely four is fingers on the top of the gear stick, and it's just down. No left or right again. Okay? Yeah. Can you do me a favor and just select uh, neutral again for me? And you, good, you know you're in neutral, that's third. Come down in between. You know you're in neutral because it will go far left, far right. Try and wiggle that far left, far right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we're in neutral. Okay, so the lower number gears have high power, but low speed. Yeah. The higher numbers have low power, power but high higher speed. speed. So they can't pull you away. No. But once you're going, they can keep you going quite quickly. Yeah. Okay? Good. Just like your bike. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And gear uh, reverse, we'll talk about that when we need it. Okay? In this car, it's just across to you and backwards. Okay? Yeah. Um, right. What's this called? Steering wheel. Yay! Okay, this is what steers your car. Hey! Yay. Um, when we did our cockpit draw, I mentioned the 10 to 2 position. Can you hold your steering wheel at 10 to 2? Good, so we're imagining a clock face. One hand is at 10, the other hand is at 2-ish. Doesn't need to be perfect. That generally is a nice comfy position. You can come a bit lower if you want to, to about a quarter to 3, but we don't really want your hands any lower than that. The reason that is when we use a steering wheel, we pull push. Okay, if we want to go right, we would hold with our right hand and pull, and our left hand would come down to the bottom to meet it, and then we would swap over the grip and we push with our left. Yeah. Okay, so the wheel continually moves. Okay, we can't do that with the engine off. Okay, <laughs> all right, but we use the pull push method. Okay? okay, if your hands are lower, wherever you're going, you're pushing to start with, and yeah. it's just a bit harder. Yeah, okay. So if your hands are at 10 to 2 or quarter to 3, A, it's nice and comfortable. Yeah, because you've done your cockpit drill by that. And B, it's smoother to steer. When we use the steering wheel, we try and use as much of it as possible. If we're shuffling bits by bit, then we're doing a lot of work. But if we can go from top to bottom, bottom to top, we're utilising all of the steering wheel. Yeah. Okay? And that's unfortunately only something you can practise when we are moving. Okay? Yeah. Good. We're going to go through um, the indicators because that's all we need today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Indicators in this car are on the left hand side. They only ever go the way that the steering wheel would go. Yeah. So for example, in this car, right, the steering wheel moves that way. So surely the indicator would go up. Yeah. yeah? Left, the steering wheel goes this way. So the indicator will go down. If they're on the other side, that's the other way around. Left is up. Right. Because you see the steering wheel moving slightly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the indicators flash on the outside of the car. Three amber lights, one at the front, one at the back, and one on the side. Okay. 
uh, and that's to show other road users our intention to change direction, whether it be to the right or the left. Mm -hmm. um, when we go around some corners and we straighten up, they sometimes self-cancel. Yeah, okay? I've seen that. They're if, though, the bend that you've done isn't too much, they might not self-cancel. So sometimes when the you indicator's need to on, on the inside, you get the tick, tick, tick noise. And you also get a green arrow shine up on the dashboard, flashing at you to tell you that it's on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if that's flashing away, you know your indicator's on. If you needed to have cancelled it, you can self-cancel it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. We're not going to talk about the radio today. <laughs> we're not going to talk about the fans and demisters. And we're not going to talk about the windscreen wipers there okay. for another lesson. Okay? okay? Yeah. All right. So remind me, how many wheels does the handbrake operate? Two. Which ones? The back ones. Good. Uh, how should we hold the steering wheel? Down to two. Good. Why not any lower? Because it means you're pushing and it's harder to Good. move. And when we talk about the gear stick, how should we hold the gear stick if we're going to select gear one or two? Like, with your thumb, like that, and then... Good. And then. Why? Because it make, makes it easier. Good, yeah, exactly, exactly. You're more likely to select the correct gear. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Well done.